This lecture will discuss some of the problems at the end of Chapter 4. Before you get started, you should locate uh, Table 19-2 uh, in the PIC 24 data sheet that's linked on the video lectures page. Uh, this table gives each instruction, shows the assembly syntax, and a description of the instruction operation. It gives a number of program words and a number of instruction cycles that it takes to execute. And most importantly, it gives the status flags that are affected by this particular instruction. Uh, this information um, will be needed for some of the problems that we'll be discussing. Problems 1 through 4, 34 give individual instructions and want you to give affected memory locations and or register contents uh, after the instruction has been executed. They also want you to give new values for the carry and zero flag after the instruction has been executed. Um, table 4.6 gives initial uh, memory and register contents. These initial register contents, these initial memory contents. It also says to assume that the zero flag is a zero and the carry flag is a one before the instruction is executed. So let's get started. Problem three is to subtract instruction. Uh, from this table here, we see that the effective flags, it affects the carry flag um, and the zero flag. So let's do a subtraction. This is going to say subtract W0 from W1, put the result in W2. W1 has in it 806, W0 has in it uh, 804. 806 minus 804 is a value of 2. Uh, no borrow into the most significant digit occurs. We're subtracting a smaller number from a larger number, so there's no borrow. So that means the carry flag will remain a 1 after the instruction is executed. Uh, this um, value right here is not 0, so the 0 flag is false or a 0. So this is the final answer. Problem 5 says, and that byte W0 of W1, place, place the result in W1. The least significant byte of W0 is a 0, 04. The least significant byte of W1 is a 0, 06. Writing these in binary, we get this. Doing a bitwise and of this, uh, a 0 and with anything is 0. So that bit's a 0. This is a 0. All these are 0. A 1 and with anything is anything. So a 1 and with 1 is going to be a 1. Uh, so the final result in hex, the least significant byte of W1 is 0, 04. Our, our final W1 value is going to be 8004. This byte right here is unaffected. In terms of the flags, um, we see that the AND instruction only affects the negative and zero flags. So taking a look at this, since the carry flag is unaffected by this instruction, because it was a one value on entering instruction execution, it will, be, will remain a one value. So um, a carry flag will be a one. The result is uh, none zero, so our zero flag is false or our zero. Problem 11 says to clear uh, W4. This is a word operation, so after execution, W4 will be a zero value. Uh, let's check the flags. Locating the clear instructions uh, in the table, we see that none of the flags are affected. This is interesting. You would think that uh, after, since the result was a zero, that our zero flag uh, would be set to a true value, but that is incorrect. Because, the, because, this, because this instruction does not affect the flag, uh, then uh, and our flags were these values uh, before instruction execution, then they will be the same values after instruction execution. So we will have carry equal to a one and zero equal to a zero after instruction execution. Problem 17 says bit clear memory location 804 bit number 15. This is a word operation, so let, let's look at the contents of location 804. 804 is an 80FF. We write that out in binary. We need to clear bit 15. Well, which bit is that? This is bit 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15. It's the most of good bit. So this bit is going to be cleared to a zero. The remaining bits would be unaffected. So writing this back in hex means that our new value of 804, uh, memory location 804 is going to be 00. zero. FF. What about flags? Looking at table at the table, we see that the bit clear affects none of the flags. So that means that our flag uh, flags are going to retain their original settings before exe instruction execution. So uh, zero flag would be a zero, and the carry flag would be a one. Problem uh, 23 says logical shift right uh, register W3 by eight positions. Place the result 
in register W3. So contents of register W3 is going to be an F0A2. We'll write this out in binary. When we shift this to the right, we're shifting it to the right, and we're going to shift it to the right by eight positions. That means that we're shifted, first of all, we're going to be shifting in zeros. This is a logical shift right, so zeros will be shifting into the most significant bit position. Um, so if we take these bits and shift them to the right by eight, it means that these lower eight bits here are going to fall off the end, and these eight bits here are going to move into uh, the least significant eight bits of this word. So our final result is going to be a zero zero. We shifted in eight zeros here, followed by this byte here moving to this location F0. In terms of the flag, let's take a look at the logical shift write instructions. Uh, note that uh, these first three forms here uh, affect these flags, but we're interested in this form right here, which is in which allows us to shift a working register by multiple bit positions. This particular form here only affects the negative and zero flags. So that means our carry is unaffected, it is unchanged, so it will remain as C equal to a 1. Um, in terms of our zero flag, our, res our final result here is none zero, so our zero flag is going to be false or zero. Problem 35 asks us to convert the C code into PIC24 assembly language. These are all 16-bit variables. Uh, solution 1, which is the one in the back of the book, uses, uses two operand forms for instructions. Here we're going to, com we're going to shift left uh, U16J by one position and place it in WREG, which is going to be W0. We're then going to move the immediate hex value of 30 into W1. Um, we will subtract. W1 from W0, we call it W0 now has this, so we're subtracting the immediate value hex uh, 30 from that, so this is going to be our partial result here, and we're going to place that in, w in W0. At that point, the only thing left is to add U16I to this partial result, so we'll do an add of U16I to WREG, which contains this partial result, and we'll get our final result. Uh, we now need to move our final result that's in WREG to U16K. One problem with using, uh, while this is efficient, it only takes uh, five instructions, one problem with using these two operand forms is that um, students will often leave off uh, this statement w when writing this code. If you write the code this way, it's incorrect because what's going to happen is that's going to take U16 uh, J is going to shift it to the left by one, and then it's going to place that back into U16J, not WREG. Uh, that, uh, in this C code fragment right here, we are not modifying uh, variable J. We're only ma modifying variable K. So use of these two operand forms such as this can be a bit problematic for students initially. This solution um, shows a bit safer approach uh, to solving this problem in terms of avoiding careless mistakes. It requires more instructions, uh, but our experience has shown that this approach results in less careless mistakes by a student. And the approach is simple. You simply move all of your uh, rightmost operands here into registers, then use register register forms to, to do your computation, and then uh, go ahead and write the result back in uh, to memory. So let's look at this solution in more detail. We're going to take all of our right-hand uh, operands, which are i, j, and the immediate value of 30, and move those into registers. So we'll move i into w0, j into w1, and immediate hex value 30 into w2. At this point, we'll begin these computations. We'll first do this computation. We'll shift left w1, put the result in w1. So w1 will have j shifts to the left by 1. We're then going to uh, go ahead and add i to this. So we're going to add w0, which contains i. Add that to uh, W1, which contains uh, this partial result. Place the result back in W0. At this point, uh, the only thing we have left is subtract um, this immediate value, which is sitting in uh, W2. So we subtract uh, W2 from W0. Place the result back in W0, which now has our final result. And finally, all we need to do is write W0 to variable K. So problem 39 wants us to convert the C fragment to PIC24 assembly language. This says if U16K is greater than or equal to 
uh, hex 400 or if u8r is equal to 0 do the if body else do the else body this is a 16-bit variable unsigned 16-bit variable and this is an unsigned 8-bit variable as per our naming conventions so let's take a look at the solution um, we're first going to want to do this test right here. So we're going to want to hit move hex 400 to W0. We'll then compare that against U16K that will do K minus 400. So now our flags are set. Uh, for the logical operation, we want this condition test uh, to be a true uh, test because if this is true, we want to go ahead and jump to the if body. So the true condition test is going to be a greater than or equal unsigned, and we're going to jump to the if body. Uh, if this branch is taken, if this branch, if that condition is true, we'll take the branch and execute the if body. If this condition is false, then we'll fall through and do this next test. Now this is the last test in this logical R chain, so we, we want to uh, we're going to want to do the um, the false condition because if this is false we're going to want to jump to the else body so first of all let's do the test we're going to compare dot byte uh, u8r against zero that would do u8r minus zero our flags are now set we're going to want to do the false condition branch which is going to be not zero so if u8r is not equal to zero we're going to branch to our else body and execute our else body um, if this branch is not taken, if we fall through, then it means that U8R is equal to zero and we execute our if body. Our if body here will put a placeholder instruction uh, called the NOOP. This stands for no operation. It's an actual PIC24 instruction. It takes um, one instruction cycle, but it affects no registers and affects no flags. Uh, after the if body, we will need to do an unconditional branch to the end of our if statement to skip the else body. Uh, here's our else body. We're simply going to uh, em uh, simulate it by having a placeholder single um, no op instruction. This alternate solution uses a true condition branch for this last test. So this this test is a is U8R equal to zero? So the true condition branch would be here. It'd be a branch on zero flag being true uh, to the if body. Um, if we did not take this branch, it means that uh, neither of these conditions were true. Uh, we didn't take this true branch or this uh, true branch. So now we're here. So that means that we need to have an unconditional jump to the else body. This solution requires uh, one more branch instruction than the previous solution. The C code for problem 41 reads, if U16K is not equal to hex 400 and U8R is greater than U8P, then execute the if body, else execute the else body. Here's a solution for this problem. First, we'll do uh, this comparison. So we need to do the test of U16K minus 400. That will set our flags. Uh, at this point, um, let's figure out what branch statement we need. For the logical AND operation, recall that we want um, this branch condition here to be the false condition because if this test fails, we want to immediately execute the else body. So the false test is going to be the equality condition, which is going to be the zero flag being true. So branch on zero flag true to the else body. Um, if we do not take this branch, it means this condition was true. So now we want to test the next condition. So first of all, we're going to have to do the subtraction R minus P, which is going to be done by these two statements. Note that the solution in the back of the book incorrectly used word operations for these two statements. We, this is a byte operation as indicated by this naming convention here. So we're going to do uh, R minus P. Our flags will now be set. We're going to need the false uh, condition for this branch. The false condition is going to be less than or equal. So we're going to do branch less than or equal to the else body. Uh, if neither of these branches are taken, then it means that uh, both conditions are true and we'll fall through here and execute our if body. Here, as before, we'll need an uh, unconditional branch around uh, the else body to the end of our if statement. The code for problem 43 is a while loop that says while uh, U16I is not equal to U16K, execute this loop. Here's our solution. First, we need a label to mark the top of our loop. Then we're going to need to set the flags up for our branch for this test. So we're going to need to say I minus K, which is going to be accomplished by these two instructions. At this point, we need to determine what branch we need. We need a branch for the false condition because if this condition is false, we want to skip around the loop body and go to 
uh, after our, our loop body. So the false condition here is going to be the uh, equal would be I equal to K. So our branch is going to be on the Z flag being true. So branch on Z flag being true to our loop in. If this branch is not taken, if we fall through the branch, then it means that I was indeed uh, not equal to K. So at that point, we're going to execute our loop body, which is represented by a single no op statement. At the end of our loop body, we need an unconditional jump back to the top of our loop, which is going to redo our test. Uh, it's a very common error is to forget to put uh, this unconditional branch. Problem 45 is a do while loop that says do this loop body while U8R is not equal to zero or U8P is less than U8Q. Before we get started, let's write a pseudo assembly language that's going to list the steps that we need. We need a label for our loop top, need our loop body statements. Then we're going to need to evaluate this first condition. We'll first set the flags by subtracting uh, zero from R. At this point, we need to determine what loop condition we need. Since this is a logical OR, we know that if this test is true, then we can immediately uh, jump back up to the top of our loop body. So we need, a, we need to branch on the true condition to our loop top. Uh, similarly, for this, uh, this comparison right here, we're first going to need to set the flags by subtracting Q from P. Uh, and we're also, if this test is true, we're going to branch back up to the top of our do loop. So we need to branch on the true condition to our loop top. So now let's write the assembly language. We're going to represent our loop body by a single no op statement. Uh, to do this comparison of R against 0, we'll simply use a single inst instruction of compare 0 that by U8R, that'll subtract 0 from R. For this true condition branch, um, this is a not equal condition, so that means we're going to do a branch on not 0 back up to our loop top. Uh, for uh, this comparison here, we first need to do subtraction. We do that subtraction by of P minus Q by these two instructions. For this less than uh, comparison, the true branch, we'll go do branch on less than unsigned back to our loop top. Problem 47 is some C code that attempts to count the number of one bits in an 8-bit variable uh, called UAJ. The way it's going to do this is going to have a for loop that loops eight times. Each time through the loop, we're going to take a look at the least significant bit of J. If that value is a 1, we're going to increment a count and keep that count in K. Each time through the loop, we'll shift J to the right, so we'll move a new bit into the least significant bit. Before we do this code, let's transform this for loop into a while loop. So we'll take this guy right here, we'll move it here. Uh, this test right here is going to become the test of our while loop. Uh, this is still the body of our while loop. Uh, and then we'll take this code right here and we'll move it to the end of our while loop. Let's begin implementing this code. The first thing we're going to do is that this U8I variable is simply a loop counter for this loop, ensuring that it, that it uh, loops eight times. As such, we're simply going to use a register W0 for that variable. We could have used any register. We could have also used a memory location, but we'll just use a register here. So here we're going to, so let's start. First thing we're going to do is we're going to clear U88K. We're going to clear W0, which we're going to um, stand for our I variable. At that point, we're ready to begin implementing our while loop so we'll have a label standing for the top of our while loop we now need to implement this test so we'll do that by subtracting 8 from I so we'll do compare that byte W0 with 8 uh, that will set our flags at this point we need to determine what branch condition we need recall that for a while loop we want this to be the false condition because we want to exit and skip this loop if this test is false. The false condition will be i equal equal to 8. If we subtract 8 from i and they're equal to each other, then the 0 flag will be set to true. So we want to do a branch on 0 to our loop exit. If we do not take this branch, then that means that i is not equal to 8. At that point, we're now ready to uh, write the code for our if statement. Let's take a look at this conditional test in the if statement. This says if UAJ bitwise and with a 0, 1. That means that we're taking a 0, 1 and we're bitwise, uh, bitwise anding that with bits from J. Well, what's going to be the final result? Um, well, these are all zeros, so that these, these guys right here will be zeros. 
this bit right here, if the bit of j is a 1, it will be a 1. If the bit of j is a 0, it will be a 0. So all this is doing is simply testing the value of the least significant bit of j. Uh, if that least significant bit of j is a 1, then we're going to execute this if body. If it's a 0, then we're not going to execute the if body. By the way, this equal equal 1 uh, is not needed in this code. It's simply redundant. Taking it out will uh, this code will execute the same way. So how do we implement this test? Well, we saw that an easy way to do it is to use a bit test instruction. We could take j and bitwise and it with 0, 1, but we can do it less instructions by using a bit test instruction. So we'll do bit test dot by uaj, the least significant bit. Now what test do we need here? Well, we want to skip this if this uh, if this uh, bit test if this bit is a zero if the bit is a zero then that means that the zero flag will be set to a one will be set to a true value so we want to skip um, the the if body if um, our bit is a zero if the z flag is equal to a true um, if the bit is a one then the Z flag will be cleared, and we won't take that branch, and we'll increment the if uh, we'll uh, execute the if body, which is simply incrementing this K value. So here's where we're going to increment the K value. At that point, we're right here. We need to we need to implement these two instructions. So this logical shift right dot byte UAJ will shift uh, J to the right by one and write the result back to J. Uh, here we'll increment i, so we'll increment w0 and start a result back in w0. Finally, we're at the end of our loop at this point, so we need to loop back up. So here we're going to have a branch unconditional back to our loop top. Uh, and that completes the solution to this problem.